Financial planning and investment management services provided through Certified Advisory Corp. CAC, a federally registered investment advisor. CAC is a federally registered investment advisor and only transacts business in states where it is properly registered or is excluded or exempted from registration requirements. Information presented on this program is believed to be factual and up-to-date, but we do not guarantee its accuracy and it should not be regarded as a complete analysis of the subjects discussed. Discussions and answers to questions do not involve the rendering of personalized legal tax or investment advice, but are limited to the dissemination of general information. Listeners should consult with a legal tax and or investment professional for advice specific to their needs. Good morning and welcome to On The Money here on WDBO AM 580, always streaming live inside your WDBO app. This is your chance to, you know, get a little help, get a little help. Some some experts in the retirement world helping you get to and through retirement. We got Joe Bird and Matt Murphy standing by with the Certified Financial Group, a couple of certified financial planners with the Certified Financial Group. And they have been doing so for the better part of four decades here on WDBO, recognized by all kinds of magazines and national local accolades. Certified Financial Group has been helping the WDBO listeners just have a little bit of peace of mind when it comes to those golden years. And I invite you to join the team here on the air. 844-580-9326 is the number to call. Matt, Joe, how are we doing today? Good morning. Doing great, Good morning, Josh. Josh. Good to be with you. As you said in your intro there, Matt and I are here to take calls from our listeners. Things that might be on your mind regarding your personal finances, Monday through Friday, Matt and I and the 15 other certified financial planners work with our clients as fiduciaries, providing retirement planning and wealth management for a fee. But on a Saturday morning, we are here for you absolutely free. So you have anything on your mind, questions you've been thinking about, decisions that you're trying to make regarding your personal finances, whether it's regarding insurance, whether it's got a mutual fund, an ETF, your 401k, an IRA, long-term health care, reverse mortgages, all those things that Matt and I deal with, see every day, day in and day out, working with our clients. We are here for you absolutely free. And the good news for you is, is the lines are absolutely wide open. So if you have any questions and anything on your mind, once again, the lines are open and the numbers are... 844-580-9326, 844-580-WDBO, or you can send in your open mic using that free WDBO app. The topic of today's show is doing well by doing good. Savvy, charitable, and gifting ideas. Joe, one of the things I hear from clients a lot, uh, <clears throat> in particular, I'm not sure why, but recently, um, is a lot of confusion and questions around gifting, whether it's to friends and family or to charity. So I thought we'd take a few minutes this morning and talk about um, some of the parameters and some of the rules and consequences of gifting to both friends and family and to charities. Let's do it. And, you know, maybe clear up some confusion. I bet, Joe, some of these things that I'm going to mention you, you hear often uh, as well. And the most common one uh, is is kind of this annual limit that you can gift, and it usually comes up in the in the conversation of, "Hey, I want to gift my kids or my grandkids some money." Uh, and I had actually two calls on that this week, uh, so I thought we'd clear up some of the confusion around that. So the the tax code allows for us to gift up to in 2024 eighteen thousand dollars per year, and that's called the annual gift exclusion amount, and that's per individual, and that's per individual. Um, that's right good point joe um to to take that a little bit further so for example if you're married let's say you're married and you and you have a child um both you and your spouse could gift eighteen thousand dollars each to that child under this annual gift exclusion amount and it doesn't have to be a child it could be anybody it could be your neighbors that exactly could be a couple of guys on the radio on saturday morning it sure could couldn't it (laughs) so that no it's a good point it's not limited it's not limited to anybody for that matter so you know you know the misconception that i see occasionally is some people think the gift when you make that gift it becomes tax deductible yep exactly or or for that matter that it's maybe even taxable to one of the one of the parties it's going to be income to the kids or whoever you give the money to joe that that's on point that's exactly what i wanted to cover this am i morning. reading your notes here this morning? Uh, no right. no you're reading my mind though right, there you go um so that eighteen thousand dollars it doesn't mean that if you were to gift you know in excess of that eighteen thousand that somehow it's going to be taxable to either you or to the recipient what it means is the tax code allows for a lifetime and we're going to get a little technical here, but a lifetime exemption amount with gifting. Um, and right now, that number is at a staggering $13.61 million. So what that means is over the course of your lifetime, you can gift up to $13.61 million without incurring any gift tax. 
Um, now, that's also, you know, to, not to get too technical, but that's also in combination with the estate tax. So you can do a combination of gifting up to $13.61 million and or, uh, you know, passing to somebody else at your death via your estate up to $13.61 million. So just going back to the $18,000 per year, as long as you don't gift in excess of that $18,000 per year to any particular person, then you're not eating into, you're not using up that $13.61 million lifetime exemption amount of, you know, that you have available to you throughout the course of your life. But that may change. It, it, it almost certainly will change. And so all, everything that I'm talking about, I, the, the basic structure of what I'm talking about likely will not change. However, the numbers will. So as probably a lot of our listeners know and have heard, at the end of 2025, the current tax code is set to sunset. And it will go back to what it was prior to uh, the Trump tax cuts in 2017. And lots of things will change. Um, and, and one of the most notable changes will be, in fact, that figure. And so I, nobody knows exactly what that number is going to reset to in terms of that lifetime exemption amount. Um, because from what we've heard, it's set to go back to what it was, but it's going to be adjusted for inflation. So the figure that I saw, Joe, was about $6 million. Right. And now the annual gift amount may not change. In other words, the 18000 that may increase because it has been over time. But the, but the exclusion amount that you're talking about, the exemption amount, we can give up to $13 million and not have, incur a gift tax. If they change the tax law, that will definitely change. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah, I think it's, you know, I, almost every year it seems like that annual amount goes up. Right. I think it was 17 last year, it's 18 right. this year. Right. So it's a good right. point. Right. It, it probably will increase. But you're talking about non-deductible gifts. Now, there are deductible gifts. There, there certainly are. So... Uh, unfortunately, gifts to, to friends and family members are not tax deductible. Mm -hmm. um, they may feel charitable from, from right. your perspective, but they are not tax deductible. So a gift to, for example, a qualified charity, a 501c3, uh, is, is potentially a tax deductible gift. Now, there's all sorts of rules and, and limitations on that as well. Um, I'm Joe, as you know, I'm doing a workshop here at 10 o'clock this morning, and one of the subjects we're going to cover is um, qualified charitable distributions. And, you know, Joe, you and I deal with this stuff every day, uh, and, and I think sometimes we probably take for granted that people know these things or that they're aware of these things. So um, I thought I'd bring up this qualified charitable distribution topic again because I find that, you know, at least half of the time when I bring this up, people are not aware of it. Um, and, and what it means is when you reach uh, age 70 and a half, so remember, 70 and a half used to be the required minimum distribution age. Right. Now, uh, well, it always was a qualified charitable distribution age, uh, and it still is. So once you reach that age, you can take... Your, you can take up to $100,000 from your IRA and donate that directly to a charity and have that, that donation come right off the top. So, you know, right now, what we know is that the standard deduction has gone up significantly. So in the last several years, people that may have been gifting to charities prior to that, that increase in the standard deduction were getting a tax deduction for making those charitable contributions. And now all of a sudden, since that standard deduction has gone up so much, they're not getting a tax benefit for doing it anymore. So this is a way around that. If you're of that age and you have an IRA, uh, you can gift, let's say, $10,000 you know, directly from your IRA to a charity, and that money will never be taxed. It goes straight to the charity. And the benefits are. Oh, the other thing, uh, the, oh, you mentioned this, and I know you talked about it in the workshop, and maybe you did mention it, that it has to go directly from the IRA to the charity. It cannot pass through your hot little fingers. That's a, that's a good point. Yeah, exactly. And I think people are you know, probably somewhat familiar with that concept. It's kind of like when you take a rollover or something like that. You don't want to get the money. You want to send it directly to the end recipient. Uh, kind of the same thing with this QCD. So, yeah. So, so for example, you know, most of us work with Fidelity. Um, if you're working with, if you have an IRA with Fidelity, you would want Fidelity to send that, that in my case, the $10,000 directly to the charity. You don't take the money and then write a check to the charity. Right. You have that money sent directly to them. Right, right. So I, I think that's probably, you know, if somebody's at that age and, you know, they're asking, Matt, what's, you know, what's the first thing I can do to save on taxes? That's the first place we're going to look because, you know, a lot of times what I'll find, Joe, is somebody may be giving, you know, they might be writing a check and, and 
you know, putting it in the basket every week at church, and maybe it, you know, adds up to five or six thousand dollars at the end of the year, and yet they're sitting on this IRA. They're going to take a required minimum distribution. They're not getting any tax benefit right. for making that, you know, putting the check in the or putting the envelope in the basket every week. So what we can do then is is redirect those monies. It's it's not that you're giving any less. In fact, you're giving the same amount. And, and guess what? The church doesn't care whether you do it from your IRA or you do it in the envelope right. every week. Right. Um, so that way, if we take it from the qualified charitable distribution, the QCD, we're guaranteeing that you're getting a tax benefit for that. Whereas if you're just putting an envelope in every week, you're hoping at the end of the year you might get a tax deduction for it. And you probably won't. So these are the things you cover in the uh, tax planning through the four stages of retirement. Yes, it is. That you're doing this morning. You have a full house here coming into our learning center here this morning up at Altamont Springs. And we're going to move this show come November the 9th. Yes. Taking it on the road. Yes, we are taking it on the road. We will be at Village on the Green over in Longwood, just about, oh, I don't know, maybe five minutes from the office here. Beautiful spot. Um, and I don't know, maybe once or so a year, we do one of these workshops on the road, as you say, Joe. And uh, I don't know, for me, it's fun just to kind of get out get out of the office and, and you know bring the word out to other audiences a little bit. So that'll be the same workshop, uh, as Joe mentioned, uh, plant, tax planning through the four stages of retirement. So here's the beauty of this. It's gonna, we're going to do the show live from there at 9 o'clock. So if you'd like to come in and sit and be part of the live studio audience, you're welcome to do that. And following up with that, at 10 o'clock, you'll be doing your workshop, maybe 10, 15, 10, 30, because of being able to set up. And then uh, the Village on the Green is going to host everybody for lunch. So if you'd like to come on by, see my new home, see where we're living, um, and see what it's all about and what the uh, tax plan through the four stages of retirement is all about, we encourage you to circle that date on your calendar, November the 9th. I think our website still shows it that it'll be held here. But for our knowledgeable WDBO listeners, you now know the show is going to be moved to Village on the Green, November the 9th. We encourage you to come on out and see Matt and me. But you're talking about the you know the four stages of retirement, and maybe we can touch that again uh, coming back on the break because a lot of people don't know about all these uh, ins and outs, and they change the ever-changing tax law. They sure do. Ever-changing tax law. So I hear the bumper music. Josh, take it away. Thank you much, Matt Murphy, Joe Burt, Certified Financial Planners with the Certified Financial Group, taking your calls, answering your questions, guiding you to and through retirement here on the air, here on The Money. You are listening to On The Money. 844-580-9326 is the number to call. 844-580-WDBO. Send in your open mic using that free WDBO app. You're listening to On The Money, where we're planning tomorrow today with the Certified Financial Group. Welcome back to On The Money here on WDBO AM 580, always streaming live inside your WDBO app. Certified financial planners in your pocket right now to answer any questions you may have about guiding you to and through those those so much fun years. You know, once you get to retire, you want to make sure you're ready to retire and have the funds to maintain the lifestyle you want to maintain throughout retirement. And that's what they do at the Certified Financial Group. So pick up the phone right now, 844-580-9326, 844-580-WDBO. Send in your open mic using that free WDBO app. And the topic of today's show that Matt Murphy and Joe Bird are guiding us through um, is, of course, how to do some charitable contributions and some savvy tips while doing so. Well, we're, we're talking also about the uh, tax planning through the four stages of retirement. One of those is the topics that we just t- you just touched on there, uh, Josh, uh, regarding giving in your retirement years. But you've got some other ideas there, Matt. Yeah, and I think the basic premise, Joe, is that, you know, we, we go through our entire life while we're savers, you know, so we'll, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, we're saving money into 401ks, we're saving money into IRAs and other investment vehicles, and the tax the, the 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 items from a tax perspective that you need to pay attention to during that phase of your financial life, let's say, um, are completely different than the tax items you need to start paying attention to once you are near and in retirement. So, you know, for example, um, if you've got kids, the child tax credit goes away. Once you're in retirement, you know, you're you're not contributing to 401ks and IRAs anymore, so you're not getting tax benefits for that. Oftentimes, if you're fortunate enough, you've paid off a mortgage, maybe you're getting some tax benefits for paying the interest on your mortgage before, and so you're not getting that anymore. And then you have to start paying attention to uh, two of the big ones, and, and these are these are items that I'm going to be covering in the workshop this morning and the one uh, at Village on the Green on November the 9th, 
is how your Social Security is taxed and how your Medicare premiums are affected by your taxable income. Yeah, it's a big surprise to a lot of people when they enter that first year and says, oh, my gosh, how come I'm I'm losing this, I'm paying that. I never realized that. And you have to factor that into your retirement planning because if you don't, that's an expense. It's a tax. And if you don't factor that in, you think you're going to have all this money coming in. Social Security is going to be coming in. I'll be paying in the middle of amount on, on Medicare, and I'm going to be in good shape. Yeah. You don't do some planning, you're in for a surprise. You know, I'll tell you an example, Joe. I had one of my clients um, before she came to me a few years back. Um, she, well, the, the way it came about is, you know, she said, gosh, my, my Social Security went way down. I thought Social Security got a, you know, got a cost of living adjustment each year. And we started digging into it, and she sent me all the letters that she got from Social Security Administration. And come to find out, her Social Security payment didn't go down. Her Medicare premium skyrocketed. Well, right. And what happened was, two years prior, she's very charitably inclined. She gives a lot of money to her church and, and other charities. And uh, she had never gotten the, the guidance that, you know, and she's got a huge IRA. So she's, you know, she's taking her minimum distributions every year, but she's also donating to charity, getting no tax benefit for it. So what happened was she took a, a, a large RMD, you know, in a particular year. And then two years later, come to find out her Medicare premium skyrocketed. And that was an easy fix. You know, going back to what I said before, all we did is we gave the same amount to charities, except we donated it from her IRA in the form of a qualified charitable distribution instead of her just writing checks to these charities. And guess what? In two years, her Medicare premiums are going to, back, going to go back to you know, what they should be. And so she'll see that her Social Security actually does increase each year with the cost of living adjustment. Right. And not only that, you know, that impact, but doing a Roth conversion or the sale of a house or making some big transactions that you're doing is going to impact the taxation of your Social Security and your Medicare premiums. Irma, we call it, right? Irma? Irma, yes. Um, well, not, not referring to the, to the hurricane that blew through here a few years ago. Right. Income-related monthly adjustment amount. It's just a fancy acronym for what I would consider just to be a Medicare tax, right. Medicare premium right. tax. All right. So you'll be covering all that this morning for the fortunate people that are coming by. We're going to see here in the next half hour or so. Once again, you'll be covering all that in more detail on November the 9th at Village on the Green. We look forward to seeing our listeners there. And I hear the bumper music. Josh, so take it away. You got it. If you want to join the conversation, Joe Bird and Matt Murphy, certified financial planners with the Certified Financial Group, here to answer your questions live on the air. 844-580-9326. 844-580-9326. WDBO, or you can send in your question using the open mic feature within the WDBO app. You're listening to On the Money, where we're planning tomorrow today, today with the Certified Financial Group. Welcome back to On the Money here on WDBO 1073 FM AM 580, always streaming inside your WDBO app. Got a couple of certified financial planners, Joe Burt and Matt Murphy. With the Certified Financial Group, answering your questions, planting information inside your brain, information you need to get to and through retirement confidently. If you want to pick up the phone right now and dial 844-580-9326, you can you know, get that info planted in your brain specific to your situation. 844-580-WDBO. Send in your question. If you want to use the open mic feature, you are more than welcome to do that as well. Open up that WDBO app download it or send in your open mic there in the bottom right hand corner we got mugsy calling in and mugsy was listening to the episode last week following up a question about social security go ahead mugsy you're on the air good morning mugsy hi joe and matt how we doing good thanks Great. for calling i think uh, we we met down at the wdbo studios a year or so ago we attended one of our workshops am i correct Yes, sir. Yes, there sir. Thank there you go. And um, I appreciate uh, answering our calls. So uh, Josh was right. Um, I, I, if I missed your radio show, I try to catch up later on a podcast when it's posted. And there was a woman named Joanne last week who called in about her Social Security benefit. And I kind of resonated with her because she's a lot like me. I am single. Um, I was married for 31 years, um, and I just filed for Social Security uh, last week. And then, well, like maybe two weeks ago, and I'm filing for early. I turn 62 shortly. And they approved it this week. 
So when you go through the online application, they ask you all the questions, just like Charles said, and they evaluate which would be higher, your benefit or your ex-spouse's benefit. Well, half of it. And... Um, and I was a government employee, so I got the WPO, uh, no, windfall, the WEP, windfall right. elimination. I got the GPO, government pension offset, and they came back with a number. Here's my question. Sorry for all that. Um, how do I know? How can I verify that what they told me is correct? Well, that's one heck of a question. Uh I'm not sure. I think in this case, unfortunately, you're at the mercy of whatever the government tells you. And I hate that as an answer, but I don't know an answer of how to how to uh, change their numbers or to go back and test their numbers. I don't either. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Wish, there, so, I, wish, yeah, I wish there was some way to, to plug in the facts that you know. As, as you probably know, your benefit is based on your highest 35 years of earnings, and then you have the offsets because of the government employment. And then you don't know yeah. what your ex earned, so you'd have to have all that information exactly. as well. Yeah, and they, I don't yeah. think they'll give you that information yeah. either, Muggsy. Will yeah. they? Did you try? No, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the whole reason I applied online is I went to the Port Orange office, which is I went in person three times, and I was so discouraged by the service I got from them and the inability to answer questions and the total contradictory answers, um, I said, all right, I'm doing this online. Certainly the technology is better. And I thought, okay, yeah, this was easy. This was easy. I got this, and I submitted it, and I thought they would give back to proposals what mine was and what it would be if if it was my ex-spouse, um, you know, half of his. Right. But they never did that. They just said, this is it. This is the number, yeah, behind the magic curtain, trust us. Right. And that, and that unfortunately, I understand where you're coming from. You certainly like to know that the calculations have been done accurately and taken yes, into consideration yes. all the things, but we have no way of knowing. And, you know, we know that the government does make mistakes. I, I don't have an okay. answer for you. I, I wish I did. That, yeah, I've never no. been uh, posed with that question. And uh, we'll see if we many of my colleagues have an answer for you, um, but I really okay. don't. I really don't know. Okay. Yeah. And well, particular, gosh. particular in your case, because you know it's not straightforward that you you know you've got the government offset in, uh, in, uh, information there as well that changes your yeah. your your <laughs> your benefit, huh? Yeah. Well, I wish I could help you, Muggsy. We're stumped. I thank you. You okay. know what? You actually, even though you think you didn't. You couldn't help me. You did, because I could go to sleep tonight knowing that I'm done, and I'll just, <laughs> I'll just take it when it comes. Thank you, guys. You're welcome, Muggsy, right, and thanks for being a loyal listener. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Josh. I see we got some um, open mic questions. You got it again. You can send in your question using that free WDBO app, the open mic feature inside, just like a couple of listeners here. Mike from Orlando. I have $90,000. I'm 63 years old. Is it too late to invest in an IRA? Thank you. Sure. Well, the amount of money that you have is not the critical thing. It's are you employed? And yeah. Are you, so you have to have earned income, and by earned income, it, we're not talking about interest, dividends, capital gains, but have earnings, whether it's self-employment income or W-2 income, and you, you're, it's not too late, never too late to get a tax deduction, let that money grow for you. Now, the question is, Roth or, or traditional? Yeah, Roth or traditional, or for that matter, if Mike's thinking, you know, what, what he can't do is he can't put that entire 90000 Right, in yes, yeah, yeah, I should have addressed you know, that. I think that's where he's going. Pro- probably so. So, Mike, if you're listening, you can you could do, uh, if you're over age 50, you could do this year up to $8,000 into an IRA. And like Joe said, if it's a, um, if it's a traditional IRA, you'd get a tax deduction um, to making that contribution. Um, if you put it into a Roth IRA, put the same amount of money in, uh, but it's either or. 
and you wouldn't get a tax deduction for it, but that money would grow tax free for you. And, and you know, depending on your the rest of your financial situation, what your income is, and uh, and all of that would determine whether it's more appropriate to do the the traditional IRA or the Roth IRA. Um, so we'd, we'd kind of have to know a little bit more about your situation there. But yeah, you wouldn't be able to put the entire ninety thousand in. But certainly to answer his question, it's not too late to contribute uh, to an IRA. Yeah, and if you're self-employed, there's uh, you can get substantially more deductions by setting up some form of retirement plan for yourself, other over and above a traditional IRA, over and above that seven or eight thousand dollar limitation. Yeah, so you do a SEP IRA mm-hmm. or something like mm-hmm. that, or a, yeah. a one man four hundred one k. Yep, that's right. Yep. So there there are other options that are available to you, but you can't necessarily dump in the whole ninety thousand into an IRA, but perhaps with the, with some form of other retirement plan. So I hope that helps you out, Mike. Appreciate the open mic question. I see you got another one there, Josh. You got it. If you want to call in, 844-580-9326. Or we do have Charles Curry standing by off the air to take the call live in the office if you want to get right to the source of the information at the Certified Financial Group. That number is 407-869-9800. 407-869-9800. Here is open mic number two. Good morning. I have a IRA consisting of about a million dollars in treasury bonds, 5%, split up up into seven segments. I'm considering taking one of those, which is about 150, out to go ahead and have for projects, which I'm working on this morning. Where do you suggest that I park that in the meantime? I don't want anything long term. So anything you could tell me would help out. Thank you. Yeah, well, the good news is that right now interest rates are still reason higher than they were the best in recent years. You can get about four or five percent in a money market account. We can yeah. get that, right? Yeah, I know the Fidelity money market right now is paying just just under five percent. So uh, that's you know liquid and available, um, you know, pretty safe. Obviously, the difference there, of course, between a money market and a and a treasury or CD is if interest rates go down, those money market rates, just like any bank or savings accounts rates, would decrease with it. But if it's money that you're going to be using, I think I think you had mentioned for a project upcoming, um, you don't want to subject that to any risk and you don't want to tie it up anymore. So probably something like a money market would be a good place yep. to, to keep that money in yep. the meantime. So hope that answers your question. Appreciate the open mic call. And I see we've got a text question photo in there as well, Josh. You got it again. Call 844-580-9326 to hop on the air right now. Text question from Myra in Tampa. Myra wants to know, Myra would like to convert some of her IRA to a Roth, but my understanding is I'm limited to $7,000 per year. Is there a strategy for converting more to Roth each year? We'll be talking about that here in about uh, 10 minutes, as a matter of fact. Um, there's This is another misconception. Uh, there's two ways to look at Roth IRAs. There's contributions and there's, and there's conversions. So in order to be eligible to make a contribution, and that's limited to 7000 per year, or if you're over 50, it's up to $8,000 per year, you have to meet certain income limitations. So you have to be under a certain income amount in order to be able to, to be eligible to make that Roth IRA contribution per year. But what, what it sounds like Myra's talking about here is a Roth conversion, and that's treated differently. So there is no income limitation, nor is there a dollar amount limitation per year um, on making Roth conversion. So Myra could take, you know, in theory, I mean, she could, she could be earning a million dollars a year and she could have a million dollar IRA and she could convert the entire million in one given year. Now she's going to pay taxes on that, but she would be eligible uh, to do that and would not be limited by that seven or $8,000 limitation per year. Well, once again, when you start making those conversions, you want to be careful of how it impacts the taxation of your social security and your Medicare premium, because the mistake that we see people make they jump in and get all enthused about Mm -hmm. converting it and oftentimes that conversion in the long run is not necessarily in your best interest i think the investment world the people in the investment business have have oversold the benefits of a roth in certain cases they're great but in many cases they really create more problems than they are worth so that's one man's opinion but uh, that's what we have okay and I've got another open mic question there, Josh. We do. Somebody sent in some uh, financial advice for Muggsy. We can play that live on the air here oh, after great. this break. If you want to send in your question using that open mic, download the WDBO app first. If you already have that, you're one step ahead of the game. And just open up that WDBO app down in the bottom right. You'll find a button that says open mic, push record, send it in. Or we can call in live right now if you want to do a little bit of a back and forth with our experts with the Certified Financial Group. That number is 844-580-9326. 
844-580 WDBO and again that open mic feature is always available Charles Curry standing by off the air to answer your call live off the air in the office of certified financial group that number is 407 869 nine eight zero zero four oh seven eight six nine ninety eight hundred you're listening to on the money where we're planning tomorrow today, today with the certified financial group welcome back to on the money here on wdbo am 580 always streaming live inside your wdbo app josh mccarthy sitting here with joe burt from the certified financial group matt murphy had to run he's got some things going on here just in about 10 minutes five minutes he's he's doing great things there at certified financial group we got michael calling in with a question for Joe. Go ahead, Mike. You're on the air. My wife worked for the United States Senate from 1980 to 85, and we've just learned that we, during that time, were not contributing to Social Security. Mm -hmm. So that's hurting us now. Has that law been changed, or is there anything that can be done about that? No, the law has not been changed. In fact, if you're listening, our uh, earlier caller, Muggsy, has the same situation. When you work for the government and they're putting money aside in another kind of account that obviously she's not getting much benefit from, yeah, unfortunately, that's a circumstance. It And the law has not changed, at least not to my knowledge, Michael. Well... That's what I needed to know. I thank you for taking my time, my call. Well, well, you're quite welcome. We appreciate your listening. It's a good show, and thank you. Continue your fine work. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend, Michael. Thank you so okay. much, Michael. Go ahead, Joe. And we had another, uh, I guess, uh, app call, or what do you call them? We do. Uh, an, an open, open mic. mic open, an mic, an open, open mic, mic. That's right. Yeah, somebody had perhaps a su- suggestion for Muggsy. Before we listen to it, though, I, one thing I didn't suggest, and this is a, this is a long shot, Muggsy, if you're still listening, you may want to congr- uh, contact your congressman. And uh, tell him or her your dilemma and uh, see if there is some way that you can get the Social Security Administration to show you the actual calculation that was done. That's probably your last recourse to be able to, to get. If you really want to take it to that next degree, I know Muggsy said she wants to be able to sleep at night, but this may be one more step that she, that she may want to take. Thank you much. And here is an answer, or another answer, maybe a little bit of tidbit of advice for Muggsy as well. Muggsy's popular today. She had to get her on to co-host an episode one day, maybe. There you go. Here we go. The way that you can know whether the half of the spouse's um, Social Security is from him or from you is every year you should have received a benefit statement from Social Security. I get it every single year, and it shows me how much I would get at 62, 63, and so on and so forth. And you can compare that against what they offered you. Very simple. Yeah, you do get the statement, but Muggsy's situation was was pretty much more, it was more complex because she did not know what her husband's earnings were and if that was calculated correctly. And then she has the offset because she was a, a federal government employee. So, um, yeah, you're correct. In fact, go to ssa.gov, and what you want to do is be sure that, that, the, uh, that their, your company you're working for is paying into Social Security. Unfortunately, over the years, I have had folks walk into the office, not often, but I've seen it more than once, where they found out they're ready to retire, and the company that they worked for many years ago was never paying into Social Security. And they thought they were, and therefore you lost all the, all the benefit of those earnings. And then they, the former company is gone, the people are gone, and you're really stuck. So that's an unfortunate situation. I know we're up against the clock here, Josh. Let me mention a couple of things. Uh, Next, uh, let's see, this is October the 2nd. Charles Curry will be hosting another one of our workshops. This is a Wednesday evening, 6.30 to 8 p.m. Social Security planning the basic rules and claiming strategies. As we say, and as we talked about this morning, the the government um, can only tell you what your options are. They will not tell you what is in your best interest in terms of claiming strategies, whether you're widowed, whether you're divorced, uh, whether you want to collect the 62, at 67, age 70, all those things Charles will be covering, once again, absolutely free, 6.30 to 8 o'clock here at our Learning Center in Altamont Springs. Go to our website, that's financialgroup.com, that's financialgroup.com, you can make your reservation right there. And I want to mention also, I, I don't do this often enough, that we have a couple of outposts, if you will, for folks that live in the out in the area further from Altamont Springs, down in, in Windermere, and also at, in Daytona Beach. So if you want information, we offer no obligation visit. If you want to be sure you're on the right track for retirement and considering retirement planning or investment management, give us a shout. Go to our website, financialgroup.com. That's financialgroup.com. And Charles Curry is taking calls off the air right now at 407 407- 869-9800. You've just listened to On the Money, where we're helping you plan tomorrow today with the Certified Financial Group. This is the big-